Hi everyone, this is the first video in a series of videos on the Scotch Gambit as played from Black's point of view. So in this video we're going to take a look at the main line. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and d4 is the Scotch game. Black should take the pawn, and the normal move here is knight takes d4, but the scotch gambit is the move bishop to c4, just leaving the pawn on d4 and getting on with development. So white is already to castle on the king side, and there's some pressure on the f7 square. Okay, the main line continues knight to f6, attacking the e4 pawn and getting closer to castling. And now white pushes the e-pawn to save it and to disturb black's knight. Okay, this is a common situation in many openings when white pushes his pawn to e5 and attacks the knight on f6, and there's a bishop sitting here on c4. Often black wants to counterattack the bishop with the move d5, and that is the main line in the Scotch Gambit. Okay, it's best for white to save his bishop. We will look at other alternatives in other parts of this series, but the main line continues bishop to b5. If you're going to save the bishop, you might as well pin that knight on c6. Okay, so now black's knight is under attack on f6, and the best square for that knight is right in the center of the board on e4. Okay, now the pawn on d4 is hanging, so white finally takes it with his knight, and there's pressure on c6. So white is threatening to capture twice on that square. For example, if black allows it, white might play knight takes c6, b takes c6, bishop takes c6, check, forking the king and the rook. So black deals with this pressure by playing bishop to d7, protecting c6, for a second time and relieving the pin on the knight. Okay, the main line continues, bishop takes c6. Okay, so white does give up the bishop pair here, but he keeps a strong knight posted in the center of the board. So bishop takes c6, b takes c6 is the main line, so black retains his bishop, and now white simply castles. Bishop to c5, developing, getting ready to castle on the king side, and putting pressure on the d4 knight. So here, white has a plan of expanding on the king side and gaining space with the move f4, which would open this dark square diagonal, but he'll also play bishop to e3. Now there's a clever way white can get in the move f4 for free doesn't even cost a move. The way he does it is he plays f3, and that attacks the knight, and you can check there's only one safe square for the knight, which is on g5, but then white plays f4. So getting two tempi on the knight, and the knight's best square is to return back to where it was. Okay, and now White develops his dark squared bishop and protects that diagonal to his king. Okay, from here, black has a number of moves that are common. He can castle. Uh, he can play rook to b8 and threaten the b2 pawn, uh, putting the rook on this semi-open file. Or another move that's a little rarer that I like to play is bishop to b6. And the point of this move is... Well, it secures the bishop, so the bishop is well protected, but it opens the way for the c-pawn to come forward. So black is threatening to expand with c4, or c5 rather, and then once the knight moves, playing d4 and getting a tempo on that bishop. Okay, we'll stop the main line there and we'll explore deviations from the main line in future videos in this series. Thanks for watching.